Hey everybody and welcome back to Across the Grooves. We're at epilogue whatever this is and I didn't get the pronunciation of it this time. Uh, but it appears to mean recognition or something similar. This is the epilogue where we're going to Mykonos or whatever. And hopefully find Ulysses. The lane that climbs up towards the village is steep. The bus dropped me at the bottom, at the junction with the main road. The glaring light of the June sun casts the terrain of the island into stark relief, and the last few hundred yards left for me to traverse seem almost monumental to my eyes. I stop for a while in the shade of an olive tree. The white plastered houses are sharply etched against the ultramarine of the Greek sky. The quiet is absolute punctuated only by the cry of seagulls and the buzzing of insects. I start to climb again. The main street leads to a shady little square. On the northern side, a cafe with an awning. I go over. Ah, there you are, my friend Ulysses, and I see you have a cat friend. On the left, a group of men sit around a card playing tables, or playing tables. They sit around a table playing cards, not uh, not the other way around. Obviously, that would be kind of hard to sit around a card playing tables. Cigarettes hanging from the corners of their mouth. Their mouths, they, they, they just have one collective mouth with multiple cigarettes. What is wrong with my tongue today? On the right, a young woman drinks her coffee as she reads the local paper. Further away at the back, Ulysses watches me arrive. I walk over to him, trying to control the galloping of my heart. I'm not sure how I should behave, how I should greet him after all this time. Um, I mean, let's give him a sign of affection and hopefully he gives it back. I bend down and kiss him on the cheek. He seems a little startled, but says nothing. Did he expect more affection? Maybe less. Did he ex expect more reserve? Can't tell. I need closure with Ulysses, this man who I used to know like the back of my hand, and I need to face the fact that he and I, we, have become different people. Not knowing what to say, I smile shyly. He smiles back at me, and relenting, he breaks the silence. Alice? This is my turn to acknowledge him, to affirm that I know who he is, as he's done for me. Ulysses? Thank you for coming. He raises his hand to attract the attention of the waiter near our table. A few minutes later, they bring us a bottle of Rocky and a carafe of ice water. Liz takes a mouthful and lets out a long sigh. I don't know where to begin. I've dreamed of this moment for so long, when we'd finally reach or find each other after all our wanderings. And now, when you're finally here, right there in front of me, I can't find the words. Be ironic. Sympathize. Let's 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 sympathize with the poor man. I understand. After all these years, it's difficult for me, too. Ulyss laughs. Tell me, Alice, what's your life like? You seem different, and yet I also get the sense of finding you again. I don't know if what I'm saying makes the least bit of sense. But tell me, are you happy in, in this reality? Yes? No? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, because I don't know what their, this reality is. I don't know, Liz. The record took everything I knew and turned it upside down. I'll need time to find some balance, some stability. I promise you I did everything I could to spare you. I sacrificed our relationship so that you could be free of the record, but in the end, it didn't work. What do you mean you sacrificed our relationship? Liz takes a deep breath. In the original reality, we were together. We were happy. You were in a band, and you helped Mark and me in the store when you could. Interrupt him, let him continue, let him continue. I tense up as I realize what Ulysses is telling me. Somewhere deep down, I had already suspected this. I decide not to interrupt. Let him go on. That damn record came into our lives and turned everything upside down. We wanted to understand what it was, where it came from. We followed up the leads together. Oh, you and I both did? We, we researched the record together? First Paris, then the commune in Bavaria. 
We were in London when it happened. We were preparing to go up to Boleskine, Bolskine, whatever, to meet Arthur Pullman. That's where the Ion Kairos Lodge caught up with us. I was scared. I wanted to protect you. I went back to the past and I changed reality. I put you somewhere safe, in a world where you'd never even heard of the record. Get angry? Get be understanding. I I, I understand. I get it, Ulysses. The record, it corrupts everything it touches. I could have easily made the same decision as you. I know, Alice. It was a mistake. Madness. I realized straight after I'd done it. I hated myself. I wish I hadn't done it. The lodge was still after me. It hadn't changed nothing. What happened after that? I abandoned the idea of going up to Bolskine, Bolskine, whatever, that place in Scotland. I thought the lodge knew that was our next destination. Next destination? I was almost sure I would be intercepted by Eva or one of her fanatics. I backtracked to Paris, and that's where you sent us the record? When I realized they were still on my heels, I sent the record to you in Bordeaux to prevent it from being stolen from me. But we weren't supposed to listen to it. We were supposed to just keep it safe. But because you had changed our past and we didn't know what the record was anymore, then we listened to it. And sure enough, my intuition was right. They tried to steal it that very night. I waited a few days for them to let their guard down a bit, and then I took a train for B Bordeaux, where I discovered that you were gone. I tried to track you down, first Paris and then London, so you were looking for me when I was really looking for you. Each time I missed you by one or two days. Then there was a void, a sensation of drowning in the nothingness of the cosmos. Is that because you were dead? seemed to last an eternity or perhaps a second i don't know don't really know what happened when i regained consciousness i was here in mykonos uh with the record in my suitcase and the vague memory of the precise moment in the past when you'd arranged to meet me in four years what did you do after that it took some time to find my feet i was on the other end of europe I tried to understand what had brought me here then I tried to find you, and that wasn't a mean feat for Mykonos with my limited finances. You got my postcard, I got your phone call, and now we're here. Right. Well, now it's your turn to tell me. I've got a feeling that your adventures have been even more exciting. I take a breath and tell him everything from the beginning, all in one go. Bordeaux, Jean-Baptiste, who I hadn't thought of in months, The Record, Paris, then London, then Glasgow... Glasgow, Glasgow, listening to the record again, Arthur Pullman, discovering Alyssa's death in the new reality, Prague, finally my new life. He carefully, he listens carefully without interrupting as the sun descends little by little towards the sea, lengthening the shadows beneath the awning. Then I stop talking. Alyssa takes a minute to take on board all of this new information, though I was dead. You brought me back to life by changing the past. Uh, yes, that's correct, Ulysses. Now I understand that sensation of emptiness, which I had trouble shaking off when I woke up here in Greece. By the way, you haven't told me why you asked me to meet you here, specifically. Wouldn't it have been simpler to meet in Athens, or at least near an airport? Ulysses gives me a roguish smile. Something I wanted to show you. Come on. He stands up. Picks up his fat hiker backpack, which leans against the table leg, and slips it on. It doesn't look like a very big backpack, to be honest with you. And then he digs a few coins from his pocket and drops them on the table to pay for our drinks. And the cat, apparently, uh, wants to join us. We cross the village in silence and go down the road towards the coast. After several hundred yards, we reach the site of an archaeological dig. Are you gonna, are you gonna put the record in there? Like, seal the record up in some ancient ruins? Part of the excavation site has been covered by tarpaulins. Another part suggests the remains of an ancient temple, which would have been built here a few millennia ago. Apparently, the site was only recently discovered. The dig has been halted because of budget cuts, and as we're quite a long way from the tourist zones, it would seem like authorities haven't taken the trouble to close the area off to the public. See, the cat has still joined us. Come on. Willis beckons me to follow him. Hello, cat. We go around the excavation zone, then retrace our steps. On the other side, behind us, the sea sparkles below. 
From this point of view, we can see the frontispiece stones which have been unearthed, and which display some astonishing carvings. The right side is missing, but the left side, which we can make out a kind of chimera, half woman, half eagle, which appears to guard the central part. Um, this is actually flip-flopped, uh, people. You probably should, have uh, reversed this image to the right side is missing, but here the left side is missing. Which depicts a kind of music box. It's shape almost anachronistic. Did you know that at the start in mythology, the sirens weren't fish women, but birds with the torso and face of a woman? Like, like a harpy. I turn to Alyss, which means that he smiles at me. Yes, when I told, when you told me to flee four years ago, it would seem that I decided to go in search of the origins of the record, but not the origins of our plastic disc, the true origins, and it brought me here, this mysterious temple, which appears to pose a real puzzle to the archaeologists and historians who have studied its history. According to the information I've been able to gather. It's the place of worship of a very ancient Gnostic sect. And our record is the result of the rediscovery of an ancient knowledge which would have first been found here. Are you familiar with the discography of magma? Uh, not in the slightest. No. <laughs> uh, no, doesn't ring a bell. Sorry. They're a French rock band who had their 15 minutes of fame at the beginning of the 70s. I guess you're going to tell me about that now. Kind of in the same movement as Soft Machine and the Canterbury scene. I guess with a music that's both, uh, both arty and pretty crazy. Are you going to... the Canterbury sound? English music scene at the end of 1916 and beginning of 1970s. Characterized by jazz influences and rock groups with lots of people on stage and lyrics which fluctuate between the obscure and the absurd. Soft Machine, an English band. Significant members have been some people. Um, but uh, there's Magma. Okay, but what, what does that got to do with us? I'm getting to it. Christian Vonder, the drummer and the brains of the band, invented a language of Kobayan. Kobayan? Sorry, I'm messing that up. Which most of their lyrics are written in. The goal of the music is to express emotions in a profoundly musical form. For example, if you stub your toe on the corner of a table, you wouldn't say, ouch, I hurt myself, but instead you'd scream with pain. Okay, I see the idea. It's interesting, but I still don't get see what you're getting at. In this language, there's a particular term. Zul. You gonna tell me about Zul? Term meaning celestial in Obayan, the invented language for use of, used for the lyrics of the term of the band Magma. The term has become the epithet of the musical genre of the band and for their successors. Okay. I raise a skeptical eyebrow. Zul? Yes, Zul. Okay. Whatever. What Vander wanted to convey with the term is the idea of the perfect note at the perfect moment. A kind of musical ecstasy which allows us human beings to glimpse an, an instant of the divine. Ulysses puts his backpack at his feet and opens it. He takes out a seven-inch record and a familiar white sleeve. He looks at it for a minute, his expression unreadable, and then he adds, I believe that this record, this music of the spheres, is the culmination of the quest, this quest for the absolute. He holds the record out to me. I take it. I've kept it safe until I found you again, Alice. It's out of the question for me to play it again. This record stole my life, our life. It stole the woman I love, the woman I love from me. Well, I'm still here. Ulysses looks at me with a wild intensity. He takes off his glasses to wipe away the tear which trickles down his cheek. I know that you're not, you're not still her, the woman I love from the very depths of my heart, Alice. 
And I know that I'm probably not me either, the man I was when we were happy together. Willis puts his backpack down again and takes out a little travel record player. Puts it down next to his pack. Then he pulls out a pair of headphones, which he places on the cover of the tepaz. It seems appropriate to me that our story should finish in this place where the record story began. Willis turns towards the sea, towards the horizon. You do what you want, Alice. I put it in your hands. Then he takes a few steps away towards the coast below. I mean, I'm not listening to the record, dude. I just found you. We're not changing this. I take the record from its sleeves, from its sleeve and hold it between my hands, undecided. Destroy the record or listen to it? No, we're destroying this dang record. I place the record on the ground and with one thrust of my heel, I shatter it. No divine justice strikes me down. It's the golden light of the sun setting over the Aegean. Bliss has not turned back. He continues to look out to sea. Behind me, the lane leads back towards the village, towards the city, toward my life. Before me, Bliss. Perhaps the rebirth of a destiny in shreds, or at least the promise of something like it. Let's uh, we leave or join Bliss. I'm going to join Bliss. I walk over to Bliss and take his hand in mine. He looks at me and smiles. I smile back. Then my eyes are drawn to the open sea, and as I let the beauty of this world overwhelm me, my mind travels to a rhythm of a strange and intimate melody. Are you going to sing? Like the punk goth Alice. Eyes kids around different busts leading into different prisons, different shrubs on the playlist of my life. That's where I found myself waiting. Inside of this void that slumbers across the world. Achievement unlocked. Postcard. Achievement unlocked. Swinging London. Achievement unlocked, English pressing. Assured taste. High fidelity. Crossroads. Old books. Piano bar. Mayfair Motor Club. Penny Lane. French woman. Full circle. Well, that's the end of Across the Grooves. We have successfully crossed time and space and reality. We have found Ulysse again and sort of fixed things, but not really fixed things. We have a whole new 
reality to figure out now who we are and who he is. But he's not dead anymore. And he's not gone somewhere away. It's interesting that it was kind of not needed that he was coming to us the whole time while we were running away. I'm sure there's some symbolism there. But I guess that's it for Across the Grooves. It was it was pretty good. I, I liked it. Um, I think there are like eight different endings or something like that. There's multiple different endings, but I'm not going to play them play it again and, and go find other endings. That's that's for you to do. If you want to go see them, you should buy the game and you should play it. I'm pretty happy with our end. But thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again in something else.